Continuing our bikepacking series, let's make a matching set of foam reinforced top tube bags. I'm Tim, and if you're new here, welcome. We make our own gear for outdoor adventure. In this sew along video, I go through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a top tube bag, just like this one, and the pattern is available on my website, learnmylg.com. The downloadable paper pattern includes both top tube bags. The construction method is exactly the same for both. In this video, I'll be showing every step of making the large front bag. Both bags are reinforced with an EVA foam for rigidity, and they're fully lined on the inside, so you can see the contents and wipe them out easily. In this bag, I attached the Velcro directly where I wanted it for my frame. However, it's really easy to add webbing, so you can adjust the location of Velcro for any bike. Enough said, let's get started. Getting started, we're going to be base stitching the liner to the body panel of the side. And I'm going to start by putting these right sides out, and then stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance around three of the sides. With my three sides basted, I'm going to insert the foam, and then I'll base stitch close this last side, and again, a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like we did the two side panels, now I'm going to do the back and bottom. When I put this foam in, I push it all the way over, and then I'm going to force the liner to line up to the edge. Our next step is to prepare the zipper gusset. I'm using a piece of 9 inch continuous zipper YKK number 5, and if you're not familiar with doing this, see the video that's referenced in the card above for details on preparing a zipper gusset. Alright, so I have my completed zipper gusset, now I want to make sure that the length is correct for the pattern. So I want the zipper pull to be towards the handlebars when I've closed the bag. So I'm going to make sure that this is trimmed to the right length. The bottom edge I'm going to leave long for now, and I'll trim this off when I go to do my final assembly. In this next step, we're going to join the back and bottom panel with the foam in it to the zipper gusset. So at this top corner here, the short side, I'm going to join the top of my zipper gusset where the zipper pull is. With right sides together, I'm going to stitch these with my full seam allowance. One thing you can do to make this easier is one, you can put on a zipper foot and you can push the foam out of the way. You can move it all the way over because you have a little bit of room between your full zipper allowance and the basting stitch so that foam can get out of the way and you can follow your seam guide. So now we're ready to attach our first side. Where I join those two panels, I align my side panel and I'm paying attention to the seam line. Right? So I'm using my full seam allowance and I'm going to stitch this side panel onto the zipper gusset all the way around. I'm going to be trying something here that I don't necessarily recommend, but if it works out, then cool. I'm actually going to be sewing underneath the machine throat uh, for this opposite side. All right, so now it's time to bring this back panel down the back and then along the bottom. Push that foam out of the way. Make a 90 degree turn right here. You may not be able to use your full seam allowance if your foam is a little too big. You want that foam to be right up against your seam line so you get a nice tight panel when you're done. Okay, so I'm going to do that last stitch to close these together. I crushed all this as flat as I could down against the machine bed. And this is where having a machine table that's flat like this really does help. Now with that, that closes in the bag. And the last thing I need to do is just trim off this excess from the zipper gusset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a small seam spot right here to put 3 quarter inch Velcro on both sides. So I've slid my Velcro inside the bag and it pokes out just about that much. That's all you need. And that way you can tack over this and finish off your seam so that the threading that you cut doesn't break. So all I did was I just stitched over that straight and backed over it a couple times just to hold that in place. And I got to do the opposite side and then I'll do the other one down here at the bottom. Mm -hmm.